Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. I do believe every diocese has some sort of reconciliation week, penance week, repentance week, whatever, where they bring in priests and have confession for long periods of time at different parishes. So... I'm speaking of that because I just went to a completely different parish. I went and had lunch with a beautiful friend, Anna Nuzo. She is a Catholic singer, beautiful voice. Um, She is out, you can find her at AnnaNuzo.com if you're interested in her stuff. Absolutely beautiful. But she lives in Wisconsin. I live in Illinois. So we go to this place called Marytown, and it has confession every day in the morning at 10, and I believe at evening at in the evenings at 6. So it's just beautiful. I am so blessed to have so many parishes that offer reconciliation and adoration so frequently. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. I know when I go to Tennessee, I will not have that. I will not. (laughs) And it's going to be a bummer. Okay. But that's not going to be for a while now. Who knows when we'll move? I'll fill you in when we actually make a decision on that. Okay. So back to reconciliation week. So I went to confession at Marytown and I had the most beautiful reminder from the priest. And remember, for those of you who are listening We're not going to Father Bob, Father Mark, Father Mike, Father whoever. We're not. We are supposed to be going to Jesus. That is what the priest is there for. In persona Christi, he's supposed to be Jesus. We should be thinking about him being Jesus. And yesterday... I really did feel the counsel. So priests, you know, you got to you got to take the good with the bad, right? Sometimes you go in there and you're hoping for some great counsel and then they don't say a thing and they give you this three Hail Mary penance and you walk out of there like, "Huh. <laughs> well, that didn't exactly go the way that I wanted it to. Now did it?" And then there are other times when you hear the priest saying things that you don't really want to hear. Oddly enough, that was my spiritual director before he was my spiritual director. He asked me a question, and I said, yes. And he said, well, I don't think you do if you're doing this. And sometimes Jesus has those tough conversations with us through somebody else. But yesterday was just this beautiful reminder. You can do nothing with God. I'm sorry. (laughs) That is completely opposite. Taking the the needle back on the record. Let's put that right back on the beginning. (laughs) Now maybe you'll remember it, right? You can do nothing without God. And you can do everything 
with God. Okay, that was it. And it really rang true. Because I'm sorry if you hear a big noise in the background. My husband's grinding some coffee beans down there. Okay, but the deal is this. We have to remember that. So when we're in the midst of temptation, when we're in the midst of yelling at someone or or being unkind, uncharitable, not generous, impatient, you know, whatever it is that we're we're facing, we can't turn away from it. We can't change it. We can't be sanctified without God. So it was a beautiful reminder to me that asking Jesus in bringing him into the mess at the time that the mess is facing us in the face is what we need to remember. Because all too often we don't call on God during that time. During that time that we don't want to be loving to the spouse that we have because they just made that same snide comment that they've done for 15 years But when we call on Jesus to help us love and to change our hearts, we can love everyone where they're at, no matter what. No matter what. We can face that temptation. We can deliver the spirit that might be taunting us. We can walk away from vices in our life and Fill them with virtue. Don't forget, you've got to deliver the spirits out loud and bring the Spirit of God in after. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of temptation, the spirit of lust, the spirit of pornography, the spirit of addiction, the spirit of lack of self-control, the spirit of confusion, the spirit of anger, the spirit of resentment, spirit of judgment, spirit of gossip. And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence, never to come back again. Oh, and Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, please fill me with his peace, his love, his courage, his temperance, his self-control, his purity, his mercy, his forgiveness, his love. That is really acting with Jesus in your mind, in your heart, in the day, in the moment. Instead of just, oh, I've got to have this, whatever it is that you're not supposed to have, and you have it, right? And then you feel guilty about it, and then you blame yourself because you don't have any willpower. When in the end, we must be reminded, God will give us the grace when we need it. We just have to be reminded that we can't do anything without him, and we can do anything with him. So remember, without him, nothing No thing can we do. The quicker that we square that circle in our minds, the better off we're going to be in daily life. And I myself forget. This is not me sitting on a pedestal saying, hey, y'all, get your heads out of you know where and start living life the right way. I mean, that's really kind of what I'm saying, but I'm talking to myself too. I love to pass on things that are reminders in my life because I know darn well that you're struggling with the same thing. By the way, if you are looking for help on this journey, do not constrain yourself and don't reach out to me. (laughs) I've had some pretty wild outreaches of people that haven't reached out, but have wanted to for a long, long time. And I hope to speak to one of them either today or tomorrow or next week. I have not ever, I don't believe, I don't believe I've met this man, but he saw me speak 
at a specific parish in 2018, and that was my very first talk. (laughs) My very first talk. Gosh, I think about where I was on my journey then and where I am now and how much has changed, how much God has shown me, how much closer I've come in my relationship with him, how my prayer life has just gone from literally nothing to like my best friend. It's so amazing. So I am here for you. I am. Send me an email, Kendra at KendraVonAsch.com. Go to my website, KendraVonAsch.com. Hit contact, and that will get to me, too. (laughs) Don't hesitate to reach out. That's why I'm here. I'm not too busy. I'm not someone who won't consider talking with you. There's only, only been a couple of people where I felt it wasn't the right fit. And that was because I thought that there were more things involved in this person than what I could handle. Some may be psychological, maybe, or things that might be a little bit bigger than my exposure in the deliverance realm. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't take them all, but I pray through every single one. And if you look, you're, you're really talking 98%. I take on. And remember, it's up to you for your fee or your rate because everyone is different. Everyone is in a different state of life. So I don't have this flat rate. We figure that out together. And we figure out how often we get together and when. And hopefully it's this beautiful walk where every week, typically in the beginning, you are finding that you are seeing God more, that you are seeking his face, seeking the kingdom first, and then seeing how your day actually changes, how much better it truly is. So don't hesitate to get help. And it doesn't have to be for me. If somebody else, I give you other things, right? I have a 40-day prayer course. Go to my website for that. Maybe you just want to get into a regular routine. Well, I can do it with you. We can get together every day at, what, 5 o'clock in the morning Central Time. I think I come into your inbox. There's a little three-minute video of me. And then you focus on one thing that day. You may not be ready for coaching, but you may be, you are ready for something. (laughs) You are ready for someone to take you down that road, for you to become holier, for you to seek God, because it's not seeking Kendra. That's all I do is help push people to the Lord, because that's where we all need to go. But we need some people on the earth here to help us sometimes. I also mentioned Bible in, of the, in the year, the Bible in, the, in a year. I think that's what it's called. Look up Father Michael Schmitz. We'll get you kind of introduced into the Bible. I know people that are going back and doing it another time because it helped them that much. Okay. Because why? Why, 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 why? Because we can't do anything without God. We can do no thing without God. No thing. But with him, we could do anything. Anything. And the more we remember that, the more we call on him, the better off our day and life are going to be from this point forward. So let's call on him today. Let's ask him to fill us with his love and joy and peace and get out there and love everybody because I love you all more than you know, more than you know. 
So go find something more with God and have a blessed and inspired day.